This is probably obvious, considering I'm currently on the lam, on the run from the authorities, and that's the reason the background keeps changing. But I, I have an issue with people telling me what to do, trying to pull the wool over my eyes, trying to make it, uh, trying to make decisions for me. You know, I'm my own individual man. If I want to rock a mustache and then grow out a beard because I'm too lazy to shave, so then I've got like a full mustache and half a beard, then I'm going to freaking do that. That's what I'm going to do. But let me tell you, there is something nefarious and something stupid going on in U.S. soccer. And basically, I am making this movie, this movie, this is a movie, this is a film about my life in this hotel room. I'm making this video because I was dared not to. Not by anybody that you would know, but the U.S. Soccer Federation has apparently dared me not to make this video. I'm not talking about me specifically, I'm just talking about fans in general, because apparently the U.S. Soccer Federation is delaying its decision on Greg Berhalter to let the fan unrest die down in order to then rehire him kind of under the radar, right? Because the U.S. Soccer Federation is used to being in the backwater. The U.S. Soccer Federation is not used to being in the limelight. Then the U.S. Soccer Federation has gotten used to nobody giving a shit about anything that they do and just being happy dominating St. Kitts and Nevis and St. Vincent and the Grenadines and beating on Duras and Panama fucking most of the time. Okay, that is what the U.S. Soccer Federation has gotten used to. But unfortunately for the U.S. Soccer Federation, some of whom I have met, some of whom I believe to be very nice people, they actually invited me to a game. It was a wonderful time. I got to shake a lot of their hands. But I do believe, right, that they, they are not setting the expectation that they should be setting. And if you're wondering what I'm referencing, Okay, I'll go ahead and pull it up for you because I'm somebody that, you know, I do a, a ton of, re I do years of research before recording each one of these videos. And I, I uncovered this report from ESPN's Sebastian Salazar. Okay, he said, I don't think there's anybody in USSF that wants to get rid of Greg Berhalter. They're trying to see if the pressure dies down every day they buy. It's an opportunity for the U.S. men's national team fandom to shut up. If the fans shut up, they're going to win out. I'm not going to shut up. That's all you needed to say. I can sit here and talk for days about why Greg Berhalter should be fired, why the expectations should be set higher. What a fucking missed opportunity Copa America was. Because, to be perfectly honest, in my entire lifetime, I've never seen more people actually paying attention to the U.S. men's national team not around a World Cup. I mean, I, I, in one of my previous videos about the U.S. national team, I, I, had a, I used a quote tweet from the rapper Schoolboy Q. Like, there, there are people that are not in the traditional cross-section of that small community of people that watch the U.S. men's national team, and it's very insular, and everybody just kind of, everybody knows everybody else, right? Where I'm talking about broad strokes of U.S. society that are actually paying attention, that are actually tuning in to every match. The first match in Copa America the United States played in had nearly 5 million viewers. The first match against Bolivia right? I didn't even watch that match, right? I was in London at the time. It was incredibly late at night. And I'm lying. I definitely did watch it, but probably not in a way that would be able to be tracked. Four million people, five million people watch that match against Bolivia. Can you imagine if the United States has actually, had actually been able to make a run in this tournament by, I don't know, beating Bolivia and Panama and at least getting to the quarterfinal and making it look like we were accomplishing something? But instead, the United States managed to go in the other direction. But that attention is there. That cat is out of the bag. And U.S. Soccer Federation thinks that they're going to be able to handle this the same way that maybe they've handled other situations in the past by accepting mediocrity. Well, they've got another thing coming. But they're not going to stop trying. Like Their, their first attempt here is that the, the Soccer Federation announced that they're going to make a decision about the future of the men's national team coach by the middle of next week. So they basically just put the can on the road and kicked it down the road, right? And that goes right in line with the reporting from Sebastian Salazar, that they are kicking the can down the road here to just let the fan interest, the fan engagement, the fan distaste, every major fan group that I am aware of of the United States national team has come out with a statement, including the American Outlaws. And those guys are basically in the U.S. Soccer Federation's pocket. They came out with a statement saying that Greg Berhalter should be fired. Every one of the pundits, from Alexi Lawless to Carly Lloyd, to, like every single one of them, thinks that Greg Berhalter should be fired. Not that those are like opinions that you should hold in incredibly high esteem, but everybody that they're talking to on those panels believes that they should be fired. Tim Howard believes that they should be fired. Granted, his tweet says that Greg Berhalter will get the blame, but much of the fault lies with the players. 
but he put that in the same tweet where he said he would fly to Spain to try and convince Jurgen Klopp to become the head coach of the U.S. national team, which is kind of it's kind of backing up the idea that Greg Berhalter is not going to be the coach anymore. You also have Barstool Sports, which if you're not familiar with U.S. sports media, Barstool Sports is kind of like the toxic id of the United States sports media market, right? Like this is an old, like ultra American. It's kind of the guy that's drunk at the bar next to you sort of vibe when it comes to talking about sports. They're all in on firing Greg Berhalter. They've been making post after post after post about how the U.S. national team is not doing as well as it should be. And I know there's going to be certain people that are watching this video saying, well, you know, you shouldn't expect more out of this and you shouldn't. Look, here's the deal. If we can't put together a team that's able to get through Bolivia and Panama with the resources and the interest and the infrastructure that we have going on in the United States and just the fucking raw number of people. My God, we have 350 million people in this country, right? And we're not India where we're all in on cricket here, right? Like th this is the fourth most popular sport in the country. And in the United States, that matters because it's actually already ahead of ice hockey. And we can put together a pretty damn good ice hockey team. So either we already have the players, which I believe we do, or our infrastructure is so colossally fucked that we need to fix it in order to get the players so that we can actually handle these teams. So it's one of those two things, right? And sue me for believing the United States should be able to beat Bolivia and Panama every single time we roll the ball out on the field. And if we don't, you need to be ringing some serious alarm bells, which we're not. Except everybody else is. If there's one thing that the U.S. Soccer Federation has managed to accomplish in aces and spades over the course of this process is they have managed to finally awaken the broader American sports market in a way that I've never seen before, right? Because I am somebody that for the past 18 years has, has paid attention to football, to soccer in, in some capacity. That capacity has obviously grown. I've had to teach myself, you know, the, the history of the sport and everything else. Like if you ever watch me do a football quiz, there are some things that I'll get the answer completely right. And then I was doing a football quiz recently where somebody was listing out clubs that Ronaldinho had played for, but I just never knew he'd played for PSG. So I just missed it. Like you can feel the Americanness in my football knowledge. There are those giant gaps. I'm sorry to break your immersion uh, if you didn't know that I was American and that those gaps kind of existed. But over the process of me teaching myself the sport and immersing myself in the sport, kind of coming from this outside world, the, Uni the, the interest in the United States has grown tenfold. A hundredfold. And now it is popular, regular public discourse to be talking about Greg Berhalter being fired with my dad, with my grandpa. Like this is something that is being discussed in public spaces by large media outlets, not just the official sports media outlets, but by large cultural trendsetters, uh, even in the toxic sense like Barstool Sports, right, that, that are coming out and talking about this. Rappers, NBA players that are coming out and talking about the U.S. national team and, and the failures of the U.S. national team. So the U.S. Federation has managed to accomplish pissing everybody off. Now, I, in particular, am pissed off by the fact that they believe that they're just going to be able to wait this out. Like, the moment they come out and say that Greg Rohalter's been rehired, there isn't going to be a massive tidal wave of hate. And here's the number one reason that I think that Greg Rohalter should be fired. I was talking about this on my podcast that I have with Julian Gressel called Player Manager. If you haven't listened to it, but Julian has a couple of caps to the U.S. national team. He plays on Inter-Miami with Messi and all them. Uh, and he was talking about, well... It, 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 he believes that they're going to be forced to fire him because of the backlash. And I'm sitting here thinking, if we're going into the World Cup, I would love to go into the World Cup with at least a fake sense of optimism. And if Greg Berhalter is the head coach of the team, we're all going to be waiting for them to fail. In the moment that the team, you know, one of the players trips getting off the bus, everybody's going to start hating and nobody's going to stop, right? Like it, this is the most important two years in the history of U.S. soccer. It is because a home World Cup particularly in a country where the sport is growing, this could be a nuclear bomb. Like you do not understand, if you've ever seen the movie Oppenheimer, right? The head coach is going to need to be that Oppenheimer. Somebody that is going to be able to inspire confidence. Somebody that is going to be able to go on to commercials, to go into press conferences and convince the American people that this is possible. To convince the American people that we are actually here, that we can actually do this, whether we can or not. Right, But every single round that the U.S. national team makes in this coming World Cup is going to have 
an effect on millions of people. Just think of like if, if you get to the quarterfinals, how many people are going to be into soccer for life at that point? If you get to the semifinals, how many people are going to be into soccer at that point? The last time the U.S. hosted a World Cup, the United States had been to one World Cup since 1950 before that. The United States managed to make the knockouts and out of that sprung a first outdoor professional league. And, and, and you know, 20 years later, eventually a national team that could go on and, and make three of the last four World Cup knockout stages. Like a national team that expects to be at the World Cup every time, a national team that has been ranked in the top 20 of the world for a good while now, even though we can all agree those world rankings are bullshit, right? That is a, it's impossible to overstate the impact that the first World Cup had. And the number one reason that you need to fire Greg Berhalter is because everybody's lost confidence in him, except for seemingly the players. But honestly, at that point, who gives a shit? Right? It's the same players called up all the time, and if they, in their human nature, they just want to make sure that they're called up for the World Cup, obviously they want Greg Berhalter to be the coach, because he's going to call up all the same guys. And that, in that, like, that makes sense in, hu- like in a human nature sense, but you, you also can't let the, the players make this kind of decision. And I'm not making that a generalization on all the players. I feel like if you had, you know, you, you had a couple of beers with the players on the team, they would acknowledge that Greg Berhalter is probably not the best guy for the job. I have to believe that just for my own sanity. But everybody has lost faith in Greg Berhalter to lead this team. And you don't want somebody that nobody has faith in leading the team into the most important tournament in the history of the sport in the United States. You need somebody that is going to inspire that sort of confidence, that sort of feel-good vibe that is 51% of the battle, honestly. The United States does not need to go into this tournament depressed and waiting to lose. We're not England, right? We were, we were trying to grow this game to a point where we can some point in the future be England and all be depressed about how bad our team is. Right now, there's a lot of people depressed about how bad our team is at the moment that the United States has this rampant optimism that if it can be tapped into by the right coach, Jurgen Klopp is a pipe dream. I don't think that's going to happen, right? But somebody that can step in there and say, let's ride. Like, let's do this, right? The, 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 somebody that's not Greg Berhalter, so I can delude myself into thinking it's possible that we can actually make a run. That's all, I, that, that's all the U.S. Federation needs. That's all I need. And until then, please, fire Greg Berhalter. I mean, God, it, the Copa America could have been a great launching pad for all this, and we already blew that. Let's not blow the actual event, too, shall we?